Electrocyclic reactions are not the only pericyclic reactions that exist in nature. Other pericyclic reactions exist. And the second type of pericyclic reaction that we're going to discuss is the cycloaddition reaction. Now, cycloaddition reactions are pericyclic reactions in which two pi systems combine to form a ring structure. And the prototypical example of a cycloaddition reaction that we already spoke about is the Diels Alder reaction. So recall that in a Diels Alder reaction, we basically have the two pi systems combined in a single concerted step to form our product. So we have one pi system, the 13 butadiene, in this case our diene, and the second pi system, in this case the, uh, the ethene, which is also known as the dienophile. The diene and our dienophile combine to form our product, in this case the cyclohexene. So this is what we call a cycloaddition reaction. Two pi systems combined via a single step to form the product and in this single step we have one transition energy or one transition state that contains a cyclic structure and we have one activation energy. So this is a cycloaddition, a pericyclic reaction. Now, the question that we want to explore is the following. Under what conditions will this reaction take place? And we have two possibilities. So as we discussed in the, in the electrocyclic reactions, we have thermal and photochemical conditions. In cycloaddition reactions, we also have thermal and photochemical conditions. The question is, will this reaction take place under both conditions? So, what determines whether or not a reaction actually takes place? Well, in any uh, pericyclic reaction, what we have to examine is the overlap among orbitals. For this reaction to actually take place, we have to have the formation of two sigma bonds between this carbon and this carbon, as well as between this carbon and this carbon. So, we see that these two bonds have to form in a single step for this reaction to actually take place. And the only way that these two bonds actually form is if there is an overlap between the orbitals of these two carbons and the orbitals of these two carbons. And any time we have an interaction between orbitals, we have to examine the interaction between the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital because we actually actually have a Lewis acid, Lewis base reaction in which one of them is the Lewis acid, the other one is our Lewis base. Now let's begin with the thermal conditions. So how exactly does our dienophile react with the diene under thermal conditions? To answer this question, we have to determine what the HOMO, what the highest occupied molecular orbital is, and what the LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is. So one of these molecules, one of these pi systems has the HOMO, the other one has the LUMO. The question is, which one is which? So after after we determine that, then we're going to basically try to interact them to form our final product, this molecule. So let's determine what the pi molecular orbitals are of 1,3-butadiene and of ethene. So for the ethene case, it's pretty simple. We have two carbon atoms. That means we have two pi molecular orbitals. We have the pi and the pi star. So the bonding and our anti-bonding pi molecular orbital. Now, we have two electrons in the ethene system, in the pi system, so that means those two electrons can fit into the lowest orbital, lowest in energy orbital, the pi. Now, what about the 1,3-butadiene? For 1,3-butadiene, we have four carbon atoms that we combine to form the 1,3-butadiene, so we have four uh, pi molecular orbitals. So we have phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, and phi 4. And these are our molecular orbitals. Now we have four electrons, four valence electrons in the pi system, so that means two 
two electrons go into phi 1 and the second two electrons will go into phi 2. So basically we have two choices here. There are two possibilities for the HOMO, for the highest occupied molecular orbital. So if this is our HOMO, if this is the highest occupied molecular orbital, if it's found on the 1,3-butadiene, then this is our LUMO. So if phi 2 is the HOMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is found on the other molecule, the ethene, and it's the pi star. However, this can also be the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital. So if the HOMO is found on the ethene, if it's pi, then the LUMO must be found on the other molecule, the 1,3-butadiene, so it's the phi 3. So we have two combinations of HOMO-LUMO interactions. The question is, which one is the correct one? So, to answer this question, let's recall an important point about orbital interaction, about homo-lumo interaction. Those interactions that are closest in energy are the interactions that are more sta most stabilizing and lowest in energy. So, we basically have to compare the energy between the two different types of interactions. So, if this is the homo and and this is the LUMO, this is the difference in energy. But if this is the HOMO, and if this is the LUMO, this is the difference in energy. And these two differences uh, is exactly the same. So for the case of the simple deals older reaction, we have two possibilities of HOMO-LUMO interactions that should work. So once again, remember, the closer in energy the HOMO and LUMO are, the more stabilizing and lower in energy the interaction is. In the simple deals all the reaction between our ethene and 1,3-butadiene, the two types of homo-luma interactions are of equal energy and so both should be possible. And to confirm this, let's actually interact the homo with the lumo to form our two bonds as shown. So, let's begin with our phi 2 being the HOMO and pi star being the LUMO. So, we have pi star, the LUMO, interacts with phi 2, our HOMO. These two molecular orbitals basically approach one another along the same exact plane. And when they get close to one another, what happens is these lobes, these uh, atomic orbitals of uh, the first carbon and last carbon of 1,3-butadiene will bend this way at the same time these will also bend in the same direction and so when this bends this way and this bends this way the green lobes will interact when this bends this way and this bends this way the blue will interact so we have a bonding between this carbon and this carbon and a bonding between this carbon and this carbon because both are bonding these will form our molecule because these are very strong interactions. So once again, this basically came from the fact that we're using this orbital here. So we have our blue, blue, green, green. So blue, blue, green, green. And the bottom lobes are green, green, blue, blue. So green, green, blue, blue. And for this one, we basically use the pi star and we flip this. So we have green, blue, and blue, green because there is a nodal plane between this region. Now, what about the interaction where this is our LUMO and this is the HOMO? So let's try to interact phi 3 and pi. So we have phi 3 is our LUMO and pi is our HOMO. Once again, we basically use this one. We have blue, green, green, blue. So blue, green, green, blue, and then the bottom is green, blue, blue, green. And for this one, we have the top is one color, the bottom is the other color. So notice we basically took this and we flipped it as shown. So we have these greens will interact 
and these greens will interact when they both rotate in the same direction, let's say counterclockwise. So under thermal conditions, once again we form a good overlap. We have a bonding overlap taking place and so in both of these cases we see that the deal's older reaction will take place and on the thermal conditions we will produce our final product, the cyclohexene. Now, what about the photochemical conditions? So under photochemical conditions, we basically take light and we direct that light at our molecule. Now, when we direct the light at our molecule, basically if the frequency of light is just right, the electrons will gain that frequency and that will bump our electron into a higher orbital. So we're going to go from phi 2 to phi 3. And now the phi 3 is our highest occupied molecule molecular orbital and our LUMO is still this pi star. So we can combine or we can attempt to combine phi 3 and pi star in a following manner. So these blue lobes, so now instead of using phi 2 we're using this and we're using this for our LUMO. So if these go this way and these go in the same direction as before, here we have a green that interacts with the blue and here we have a green that interacts with the green. So we have a bonding between these two carbons but an anti-bonding between these two carbons and that basically means that this reaction cannot take place in a one-step mechanism in a concerted mechanism if the conditions are photochemical, if the energy source comes from light. Now, we can also bump the electron from the pi to our pi star. So basically, instead of shining light onto our 1,3-butadiene, we can also shine light onto our ethene. In this case, we bump the electron into this orbital. This becomes our HOMO and this becomes our LUMO. And if we try to interact those, we get a similar result. One side will be bonding. The other other side will be anti-bonding. So we see that at least for the case of our uh, deals older reaction, a cycloaddition reaction, only the thermal conditions actually work. The photochemical will not work because we cannot form the bonding interactions. This bond will form, but this bond will not form at the end of our concerted step.